Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage. And this one's going to be a bit different because obviously we're not in the garage. Uh, we're out in the field staring at a combine and a tractor that happened to be mine. And if you follow me on Twitter and Instagram, you probably know that my background is farming. And there's been a few requests for me to do a Harry's Garage video on these two. So I'm going to kick off with a combine. And what we're going to do is try to explain how a combine, what is a combine doing when it goes into the field? How, how do you adjust it and that sort of thing? And also go for a drive and we'll actually go and open up a field of wheat, which is about a mile away. So the kick off, let's have a look at the combine and I'll start from the beginning as it approaches a wheat plant, what happens next? Let's go and have a look. Okay, the first bit on a combine is this front bit and it's got this big reel on it, auger down there and contains a knife. That is called the header. And this is a separate um, piece that you can take off the combine, which we'll do later for transport. But I want to show you exactly what goes on here. So if you come with me, now this a reel is always turning when you're going in the crop and it turns just about the same speed as you're traveling. Sometimes you just dial it to be slightly quicker because what that is doing is when you approach a wheat plant, as I have here, there's a wheat plant, it's coming in and it will hit that knife there and you want to cut it about there. And the idea is, why well, don't just bring this round a bit more. The idea is the reel here is holding that wheat plant upright when it hits the knife. So it doesn't flick back like that and not get cut and go underneath the combine. So it's doing that and then the reel, once it's cut it, just nudges it down into the auger. I'm not going to show you what that does next. Okay, so there's the wheat plant. That's been cut by the knife. That's flopped over like that. Now this auger is constantly turning and the flights on the auger are different either side because the idea, this auger turns and you have these fingers as well. And what it's doing is bringing all the crop from the outside of the header into the center point here. And these fingers, this turns ugh, like that. And that's feeding the crop under here and into this feeder uh, here, which is known as the, which the header is attached to. And that feeds the crop up into the combine where the sort of freshing takes place. And that's what we're going to have a look at now. Okay, this is the inner workings of the combine. First of all, I'll just lift the cover up. There we are. And if you come in a bit, I'm going to take this plate off here. Dust is a perennial problem with combines, as you can imagine. Now, this combine is something called an axle flow uh, combine, which is slightly different to most combines out there. And that's because there's a drum that all that straw and you know the wheat has come up here and then it's met by this big rotor here now on most combines this is actually positioned across the combine in between the front wheels and this is like a great big drum that beats that wheat um, and then things drop through this sieve here i'll grab the camera in a minute but i'll just show you what what this drum is doing or rotor it's various terms whether you're in uk or america but basically I'm, what I'm doing here is what that uh, drum is meant to do. It bashes the crop through like that and you end up with something like that. And that is what will drop through the sieve here and the straw element of it doesn't pass through these sieves and carries on to the rest of the machine which we'll get to in a moment. So this is where you sort of you split into two parts of the threshing job. And the grain drops down onto the morgers here and then there's wind, there's a great big fan under here, and that does, does that, and then you end up with the, with the grain itself, mainly the grain, like that, and then that then goes over some sips. But I'm gonna, if I just take hold of the camera and I'll just show you how that works. There we go. So this is a great big, it's a two meter long um, rotor inside there and just see a shiny bit there that's inside so that's beating that's going to about a thousand rpm um, when you're in wheat and as soon as it comes in this is the initial sieve drops down here and then that drops down onto these augers that then fights it up to the back of the combine uh, towards the back anyway and that's where wind is applied and that's where all the chaff gets blown off and then the grain drops down and some sieves a bit further down in there so now let's go to the next stage Okay, I'm going to open this next cover, expose a bit more of what's going on here. 
So the, the wheat has travelled up here, it's had a bit of blowing on it, and then it actually drops down some sieves. And these are the ones I can't actually show you. But these, when this is working, this is wobbling like that. And these sieves are, are, have this sort of action. And they have a, um, when we see inside, they have a point on them. Actually, I think I'll open the hatch, actually. I, you come along here, there's several sets of sieves, because the straw, when that comes, drops out of the rotor that hasn't dropped through those sieves around the rotor, it's known as the concave, which is adjustable as well, that drops down and that also goes over some sieves. So if I open this hatch, oh, where is it? There we are. I open this hatch, again, and grab the camera. You'll see in here, here are the sieves. Oh, I don't know if you can see that, but those there, of what the sieves look like and they're all adjustable they're all adjustable uh in in the cab um and they then the straw drops on there so straw has actually come up here that's a great big vicious nasty machine looks like it's come out of uh, a bond movie that's the straw chopper so that the contents of the concave will hit that and it's like a mulch in it and if you're going to incorporate the saw in this uh in this uh ground again you have the chopper on or if you're going to bail it up then you don't have that running and the straw just drops down onto this hole. And then it goes over those final bits of sieves and then at the back. And that is basically, that is basically the combining done. That's this big threshing machine, big sieves, sorting it all out to get that little bit of grain out of the whole bulk. It's a huge amount of bulk that goes through this machine and it's constantly working. Okay, so that's the sieves. I'm gonna take you just around the back of the, in the belly of the uh, combine next. Um, we'll show you the final stages. I'm gonna grab the camera because I think it's gonna be easier. And that is, if I dip under here, oh, this is a place you don't wanna be when the combine is running. Uh, so there's the chopper there. So that's the coming out the top of the uh, rotor, hitting that. And then the things, you can just see the, the augers at the back of the drum, if I zoom in, there we go. Those are the augers coming off the belly of the rotor that, came, that dropped through the uh, concave. Those are hitting those sieves there and just see some straw on it. And I come back and then these sieves do both, there we are, both um, sets of straw um, as well as the grave underneath. And these little numbers here, these are sensors. So this senses if any grain is going over the back as it's termed, you're losing grain. And if you are, then you might open up the sieve or that sort of thing to adjust. So it's all coming out of here. Um, the chaff hits these wheels here and that sort of spreads it about. There are some discs that hang on to uh, those things. If, um, if I'm chopping the straw, then that spreads it the width of the combine. So there you go. That hopefully gives you a better understanding of what a combine is doing. It's quite busy, shall we say, and it's all powered up the top, which is where the engine is. I'm going to show you that bit next. me up it's always good when you have to put steps down climb up to see an engine it's always a good sign on a machine okay so the engine hides under here I'll lift that up uh, let's just come up at one stage right maybe I'll grab the camera at this point so there you go there's the engine it sits right at the top this is a nine litre turbocharged intercooled um, diesel engine producing well it's rated at 340 and 360 at boost i never understand now it's a new thing they do is they give two horsepower boosted and rated don't know why so 360 horsepower thereabouts this combine actually dates from 2009 and it's a big capacity combine this combine would probably be sitting on a farm doing 13 1400 acres we're around 400 acres here so i love having a big capacity combine that means i can choose when we go and get super dry grain and nice sample because we've got over capacity of the combine and also i go for this sort of combine because it's super simple if you you know we, we talk about supercars analog and digital this is an analog combine and i like that there's a few sensors you have to adjust um, the sieves etc but it's got big capacity and the idea of an axle flow the capacity of a combine is the amount of volume it can deal with and 
that axle flow means you can have a much bigger rotor because it's longitudinal down the machine. You're not restricted by the width between the tires. So it has a big volume. It can handle a lot of volume of um, straw and therefore you can combine a lot of tons every hour. That's the idea. Right, so I'm gonna pack it all up now, um, do a final check. So I've got to fill it up with diesel. Yeah, fill it up this tank. The diesel tank on this is a thousand liters. So yeah, it'll cost you 1300 pounds to fill it up at a local petrol station. Um, so I've got to do that. The diesel comes to the combine because it's so flipping big, you can't get it on. Actually, there's one bit I didn't show you. I forgot to show you this bit. This is an enormous tank. So after you've finished all the thrashing and all the rest of it thrashing, sorry, you end up with the wheat ending up in this giant tank and you've got a window into the cab so you can stare at what it is and you've got two little sensors there that also pick up um, that thing is actually uh, just at the top there that's a satellite uh, sensor because this combine knows exactly the weight of the crop it's combining and its position and then can produce me a yield map and i can see which areas of the field are yielding the most and how then uh, through the year i then see how i can get the yield up in those areas that are missing hope that's given you a bit of knowledge on how the combine works now i'm just going to do the final bits fill it up with diesel and that sort of thing and then we're off go and try it out in some wheat right combines are reasonably easy things to drive ish just got to know what everything does first of all the yeah move the steering wheel to where you want it and start it on the key it would be a lots of bleeps and whirls and all sorts of things going on as the system all get going you won't be uh, surprised to hear you have amazing air conditioning in a combine and it's very warm outside. Handbrake is a switch and then all, all movements are done with this joystick here. And I go forward, backwards, putting the stick back. I'm a sort of tick over revs at the moment because we've um, got no heat in the engine. And the other weird thing about combines is of course they steer from the rear and when you're this combine is just over four meters wide 4.2 meters wide so yeah i need a 14 foot gate uh, to get through and away you go and the funny thing is when you're at the front here you're quite remote the engine's sort of at the back and when combines are working all you do is I just set the revs to flat out. I'm at um, 1700 revs at the moment, just as I say, because I'm <coughs> I'm not warmed up yet. What I'm going to also do the seat. You can hear that as an air pump, and I'm just going to pump it up, and that's height adjustment. And it's a fully sprung seat. They're really peculiar because the suspension. There's no suspension on a combine. I've got super squishy tyres on this because I like big tyres because it's normally about compaction. I don't know if you can see the ground, but this year there's this crazy summer we're having in the UK, so it's all cracked up and it's a hard as concrete. Um, so it doesn't really matter. But in a normal year, with 22 tonnes trundling across the field, I want to minimise compaction into the giant tyres. Now, if you wonder where we're going, I've got a farm, another farm just down the road, but I can't get out of the village without moving the gazillions of cars so my uh, neighbour very kindly lets me use his access track which isn't in the village so I've got to go a bit of a cross-country route so I go through here first and then we hop over a fence in the corner over there and then go down a very tight little track. It's three-speed gearbox and it's about the worst change I've ever known on a vehicle. You hardly ever change, you just choose third gear for when you're gonna go on the road, uh, second gear for everything else. And first gear, there is a first gear, if you farm in a really steep uh, area, you, you need a first gear, but I've never used it. Time to go for a drive, a little drive in the country. Quite so nice this thing. Right, it won't actually stop when it's in third. This is road gear, and you put it in the neutral position, and it's meant to be stationary. It's not stationary. This isn't very good. There we go. Now it's just an easy run up the road. <coughs> 
put the uh, flashers on and lights on up there. We are now right out. Well, not quite actually. So we'll put the revs up with the engine. The, the combine is actually speed limited, so you, it goes to the maximum speed it's allowed. Hey, there we go. 25, 25 kilometres an hour. Is, this is max speed. But as you can see, even this speed, a bumpy bit of road. You don't. Oh, is that car going to pull out? This is what we don't want. Let's just see. Right, that's good. Yeah, there's just. The good thing is, it's so big that there's no one thinks, oh, I can get around that. Because you can't. But you do feel everything. You just you know. Trends, I try and travel on a Sunday or in the evenings, because then, then you haven't got the lorries. I'm going to work that car thinks I'm going to get past him, so I'm not. There we go. You're constantly thinking about that rear swinging around. Most people are pretty good. Uh, well, they pull over, but every now and then you get someone who just like has just blindness to the fact there's a combine coming up the road. Or, they pull over by a tree and then I can't get the mirrors past the tree and uh, just at the wrong point. So if you do pull over the combine, make sure it's not a tree on the other side of the road from you. Part of the trouble with this combine is these enormous wheels on it that does make it a bit oversized at 4.2 metres. You can have combines on tracks as well. Uh, the idea there is they actually, uh, they do spread low so you have the uh, low ground uh, pressure advantage um, but they're, they're quite rough riding because there's not the suspension there's not the squeech that you get in a big tyre there's a bit of a downside on ride but then again that's better for the header uh, because that's more stable and there we go not very good at lane discipline on a roundabout in a combine right we turn right up here and we're nearly there and we're in! Hurrah! Hurrah! Great stuff! There we are, there's the field week we're going to go into we need now is a header to put on the combine. So there you go, there's what it's like driving a combine on the road. Not a huge amount of fun, but there's a slight giggle factor because of this monster going down the road. It really sure has no place on the road. Here now, um, so you join me later. Once we've got the header on, and we'll fire it into the wheat. And I'll show you how to set it up for that. Okay, combine's all set up, header's on, everything's going. So we're gonna jump on board, take you through, actually in a field of wheat. Nice to get in a cab in air conditions. Charlie here. It's my son who um, you've seen before because he helped me out on the uh, Golf and Alpha video. It seemed to go down really well. Now he's going to teach us the driver combine. Uh, it's not my normal job, I get grain cart job, but I have taught Charlie everything I know about combine driving, so he's extremely experienced at this, and he's going to take us through everything. Right, here we go. So we're at the front. So we Sorry, have the reel at the front, the big sort of hexagon. Uh, yep. Spins around, guides your crop onto your knife. There it is, there, wiggling away. Uh, onto the cutting deck, and then from there it gets drawn in by this auger so either way. through and then it passes on through some chains up into the rotor okay. sort of behind us. And as you can see, Charlie's been combined, so the tank is nearly full. We just coming in this get this window so you can see what's going on, but it's got a fair bit of capacity. And also, if we look at that map, that tells us how it's yielding, because it's got this satellite navigation. See this end of the field wasn't very good, and then it's got much better over here, which is the bit we're doing at the moment. Right, time to press on. Wind the revs right up. 
Combine's basic work flat out all the time, so 2420 revs. There we are. It's forward, the, the table goes down, it has leveling uh, boards on it, so it should follow the contours. Although we're slightly struggling on this one. so the thrashing all goes well so you want to keep it as high as possible I usually keep try and keep it between 70 and 80 uh, but for a crop like this it's not the engine load that's the limiting factor I just want to get everything in sort of without losing too much over the front but here yeah, I'm just looking at the car when it starts to lay like this that tells you it's quite a thick crop don't want that. We're very lucky we've got a dry year, but that would have gone down. So that that means it's actually yielding pretty well when I see that. So it's a good sign, but wouldn't be if the weather hadn't been so kind as this year has been. It's amazing how the hours just disappear, don't you find in here? Well, like, well, we've been going for six hours today and it's it goes, it goes it's extraordinary, isn't it? It just melts away. You have no idea what time it is. You watch the sun go down, but it's this constant. It's like being on a sort of cruise boat with the sort of hum of the engines in the background. And you, well, how much concentration does it take to drive a combine? You have to one that doesn't steer itself. Uh, yeah. You have to be alert the whole time for stones to try and keep a vaguely straight line and just try to keep the thing level. Uh, so you have, you have to be sort of concentrating all the time, and that's the bit that really is quite tiring. Yeah. That, that, that slight dig about this combine not steering itself is because last year Charlie was on a combine that did steer itself, and this one that I bought this year doesn't. And he'd quite like, wouldn't he? Quite like self steer on this yeah. combine. Yeah, I can't believe it. It's, it's, you know, it's like manual gear changes on a supercar. You've got to have a self steered combine. But it's just one less thing to think about is where you're going. Yeah. As I say, all controlled by that same stick. Up comes the hill into the row. And turn around and repeat. So there you go. Hope that sort of gives you an idea how combines work in the field. We're here for a few more hours. Uh, we'll go to about 10, 11 o'clock tonight and probably finish tomorrow. Amazing year. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon. Thank you, Charlie, for all your help. No problem.